Nuclear weapons shocked Japan into surrendering at the end of World War I, except they didn't. Japan surrendered because the Soviet Union entered the war. Japanese leaders said the bomb forced them to surrender because it was less embarrassing to say they'd been defeated by a miracle weapon. Americans wanted to believe it, and the myth of nuclear weapons was born. Look at the facts. The United States bombed 68 cities in the summer of 1945. If you graph the number of people killed in all 68 of those attacks, you imagine that Hiroshima is off the charts because that's the way it's usually presented. In fact, Hiroshima is second. Tokyo, a conventional attack, is first in the number of killed. If you graph the number of square miles destroyed, Hiroshima is sixth. If you graph the percentage of the city destroyed, Hiroshima is 17th. Clearly, in terms of the end result, not talking about the means, but in terms of the outcome of the attack, Hiroshima was not exceptional. It was not outside the parameters of attacks that had been going on all summer long. Hiroshima was not militarily decisive. The Soviet Union's declaration of war, on the other hand, fundamentally altered the strategic situation. Adding another great power to the war created insoluble military problems for Japan's leaders. It might be possible to fight against one great power attacking from one direction, but anyone could see that Japan couldn't defend against two great powers attacking from two different directions at once. The Soviet declaration of war was decisive. Hiroshima was not. After Hiroshima, soldiers were still dug in the beaches. They were still ready to fight. They wanted to fight. There was one fewer city behind them, but they had been losing cities all summer long at the rate of one every other day on average. Hiroshima was not a decisive military event. The Soviet entry into the war was. And they said this. Japan's leaders identified the Soviet Union as the strategically decisive factor. In a meeting of the Supreme Council in June to discuss the war in general policy, they said Soviet entry would determine the fate of the empire. And Kwabe Toroshiro said, the absolute maintenance of peace in our relations with the Soviet Union is one of the fundamental conditions for continuing the war. Japan's leaders said Hiroshima forced them to surrender because it made a terrific explanation for losing the war. But the facts show that Hiroshima did not force Japan to surrender. If nuclear weapons are a religion, Hiroshima is the first miracle. What do we make of a religion when its miracles turn out to be false? Nuclear weapons shocked Japan into surrendering in World War II, except they didn't. You uh, uh, mentioned that the Soviet uh, intervention was the cause of the end of the war. Uh, Stalin could have interve intervened at any time after the Germans surrendered. The troops were ready on the border to intervene. Why did he intervene at that point? Because the bomb had been dropped the day before. He wanted to get there. He wanted to, uh, he'd been promised uh, Japanese territory. Uh, that was the, what the reason you, you say was Soviet intervention, but you don't say why did the Soviet intervene at precisely that moment. My understanding is that um, Roosevelt, uh, that Truman and Churchill and Stalin agreed, I think at Tehran um, in 43, that the Soviets would come into the war approximately three months after the end of the war in Europe. And partly that was to shift, you know, to refit and retrain those troops and move them across to um, the Pacific theater. Um, it is true that Stalin moved up the time of the Soviet invasion by 48 hours after he heard about Hiroshima. And a lot of people see that as evidence that nuclear weapons are, in fact, powerful, that they do deter our enemies and so on. Um, I think that uh, I don't want to take my views on nuclear weapons from Stalin. So I, he may have been impressed, but uh, he may also have been wrong.
Nuclear weapons shocked Japan into surrendering at the end of World War I.